Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome to today's webinar. If you don't know me, my name is Anka. I'm a customer success specialist here at Socialty. And today with me, I have Fab Giovannetti. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Spotless. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for joining me today. I am doing great. And by the way, everybody who joined us live, I encourage you to share with us or all the feels because I'm going to use reactions myself. So this is, I'm, I'm feeling very low today. So that's kind of my vibe. <laughs> no doubt. Well, I'm feeling the same because apparently we're having issue with the comment section of this webinar. So please do use the reactions because you won't be able to use the chat, unfortunately. Um, let's get this party started before anything else. While I, talk to you a little bit about what's going to happen today. I also have a question for you guys, because our topic today is about repurposing content and reusing content. I want to know if you are already doing this in your content strategy. Look are that. you already doing this? Plan on do the, doing this? I know that I am all the time. It's like insane how much I use this tactic. You can see that most of us are already like everybody from like respective teams are like, yeah, of course. Yes, everybody of everybody course. else is like, no, but I'm ready for it. Well, Bring I want to do this poll again at the end and see if they plan on changing their responses into, yes, I want to do this more. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. But I like that we got a lot of people that are like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to kind of like get started. So we're going yes. to give you all the tools you need. Today. That means we're ready to get into business here. Um, okay, so I'll leave the poll on for a little bit longer while I talk to you a little bit about what we'll talk to about today. First things first, yes, this webinar will be recorded and you will get recording via email as soon as the webinar is completed and processed and all of that. So don't worry, you can always rewatch it, go back to the ideas that most resonated with you and so on. Fourth, um, we did have a Q&A planned for today, but unfortunately that won't be possible because the chat issue decided to pop up. Um, we're truly sorry about that. It's truly unexpected. And we're going to have to make do with what we have here. And if you haven't heard about Alt Marketing School or Social B yet, stick with us until the end because we do have some very cool surprises for you guys. Okay, so I see that ha around half of you have already been using repurposing content and the other half, not so much. I would count 40, 40, half <laughs> at this point. The yes is fighting for it. I like it. This yeah. is like, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who answered yes, hopefully you will find some more information that will help you improve the way you repurpose content. And for those of you who said no, I'm hoping that by the end of this webinar, you will be convinced that this is amazing and that you do actually have to repurpose your content into several forms. So today we're going to talk about how to republish, repurpose and reinvent your social media content. That's a lot of re's around here. Before we get into that, let me introduce myself properly. Hi, I'm Anka. I am a customer success specialist at Social B for about five years now. I have around 10 years of marketing experience and social media experience in particular. Hi, my name is Fab <laughs> and I am back watching live or replay. There she is, a bit of an entrance. I know, I like to do that. Um, my <laughs> name is Fab. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an author as well. And I've been a marketing consultant. Who, actually, I've been in marketing for 13 years. I've been a consultant for years. Um, one of my favorite things to do is helping professional reclaim their time. So this topic is very dear to my heart because repurposing, republishing, ring value is really about that as well. I am the CEO and head teacher at All Marketing School, which you hear a bit about at the end as well. And also my idea is to support people making a positive impact through their marketing. I also work with uh, Edge, which is an agency and a consulting firm, which also helps small businesses as well. So I'm here with you to show you and remind you that we can make marketing impactful, fun, inclusive, and human, and it doesn't have to be complicated, I promise. So hopefully that's what we can show you today as well. Hopefully so. <laughs> Let's see here. So this is like a quick explanation of what this school is. So we do focus, as I said, on positive input marketing. So it's really about making sure that marketing can be more human, fun, and impactful. 
we have a huge mission, as you see from the screenshots of our cohorts. These are live cohorts that we run because we are on a mission to help 100,000 professionals from all walks of life market to hearts and not to brain by accessing our training from incredible experts from multiple walks of life at university standards, not prices. So we are, and I'm so excited to be here with you today as well. Okay, so by the end of today's session, we are going to learn more about how you can repurpose your content, why you should repurpose your content, and what tactics you use to repurpose your content. Take a shot every time I say repurpose. <laughs> Let me start by taking a few definitions of the words that I've been using so far. Um, republish, repurpose, reinvent. Republish, obviously, is when you publish something again. Um, in essence, we're talking about content that you've previously published, either to social media or other platforms. Repurpose is when you take something that has one form and turn it into a different form. We'll go into it in a bit more detail soon. And reinvent is pretty much <laughs> reinventing the wheel, you know, finding new ways of sharing a specific idea with your audience. All these, um, they have one purpose. And that one purpose is so that you don't always have to create content from scratch. It basically saves you a ton of effort and a ton of time so that it allows you to focus on other aspects that might also need your attention as well. And it also allows you to um, focus more time on creating quality content than just having to create content because, oh my God, I need to post something on social media today. So it can help a lot with that. And the definition of repurposing, actually what I said here, is the practice of reusing all or some elements of existing content. Now, this doesn't mean posting the same thing over and over again. That's just republishing. That's just part of it. But we can look at something else. Let's see. For instance, I'll take this post that we created on social B. You can see it on our page on Facebook and I believe on LinkedIn as well. You can see that we have the body of the caption that is taken from a blog article. So you can take ideas from a blah, 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 blog article and repurpose them into, into the caption for your social media. You can take parts of your blog article even. I've highlighted here the actual part of the caption that comes from the blog article because the other one is a bit rewritten so that it suits more um, the social media part. So you can take the idea from the blog, put it into a social media post. You can take the um, audio from the podcast, put it into um, a, a put it out over some image with the audio on top and create a reel out of it and promote it on social media. You can take the pro podcast transcript and create a blog post. So there's several ways in which you can repurpose your content. And even with the visuals itself, just take quotes from the podcast, for instance, I'm going with the podcast for some reason. Um, we're taking quotes from the podcast and creating quotes, visuals that you can then have along the way to promote the episode further and further. And you can even think about um, more like the topic of the post and how you can explain the idea over and over again in a different way so that it stays fresh in your audience's mind without it it feeling repetitive in any way. So basically, the goal here is to increase the reach, increase the effectiveness of your content and make it more accessible to your audience or to your audiences. Different audiences need different forms of content. If you think Instagram, people are more social there, they're more friendly, they're going to need something a little more visual, maybe a reel, maybe something like that. Um, Facebook, people like to read on Facebook. People like to read on LinkedIn. The tone of voice between LinkedIn and Facebook is different, though. So you can repurpose and play with your content ideas to kind of resonate with each one of these audiences. Whew. Okay, let me drink some water here. <laughs> we're hearing you. Oh, we're hearing you just fine. And I also want to say I'm going to give us a bit of a bling, a bit of a clap because you did amazing. You just went for it. I love it. That's commitment to the course. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, we got Ellen as well. Give you claps. Thank you, everyone. 
Oh, look at that. I can see the names as well. They've got Tina getting claps, Alex getting <laughs> claps, everyone. I love it. <laughs> I, I will name check you if you give us claps because claps are amazing. So thank you, everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, shall I take over for a bit? Shall I give you a little yes. bit of a mess so you're beautiful? Yes. Pro? Um, yeah. So why should we care? Yeah, I think to be very honest, and uh, Anka brought up actually some great points on why we should care and also how it makes our life easier and how it makes everything better. However, there are plenty of things that we can think about when it comes to all the other benefits that repurposing has. Just as a refresher, I will have to do like a little bit of a side eye to let you know that. Yes. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and next again. And then. Um, that's one of the things I think there's a misconception that if you simplify your content creation process, then you know you're cheating and me again both of us have been in marketing for a while I started in social media 13 years ago when it wasn't as cool to be in social media and we are (laughs) it's been a while for both of us and (laughs) I've been so blessed to actually have systems and ways to make our life so much easier so take it you don't have to start all of your content from scratch look at what works and do it again please you are allowed and you are encouraged and most of us know that but I think sometimes in our minds we feel you know i have to create something completely fresh but you can and you should you know reuse what you have as well next (laughs) um also there's something to be said as well that because of what uh, anka mentioned too you will actually reach your audiences with the same content especially if you're changing the formats and even if you're changing the platform for obvious reasons And also remember, the audience doesn't see everything you do. Bless, we do know everything we're doing. You know, I know that you know because we're putting so much work into our content. But sadly, most of our audience will only see a fraction of it. So the content that actually gets a lot of conversations and lots of engagement is content that people want to see more of. So give it another chance to get other people to see it and interact with it or obviously consume it as well. (laughs) And obviously, again, this is kind of going back to what, what I was saying. It's kind of staggering when you look at the actual organic reach, which is how many of your followers see your content the first time you post it. So even when it comes to the way that you are sharing your content and letting people know within the same platform, your latest post, put it in your stories. Go on, be wild. Do the little things that actually allow that content to have a longer shelf life. Yes. And actually, the reach has decreased so much these days that it's actually encouraged to go mm-hmm. the extra mile and share your post a few days after publishing, even to just regenerate that reach and share it further. Exactly. I, I like I like to mention the shelf life as well. I think it's very important too. Mm-hmm. Got, got a li- we got a little mm-hmm, interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, right? Thank you, everyone. Again, Tina is back as well. Alex is back too. Um, so how do we make the most of our content? Again, Anka broke it down for us. We can republish, repurpose, or reinvent. We've got different options. And there are different reasons why you will go one way or the other based on some things that you will see. So if we go to see what these actually are and how they're different. Haha. Um, when it comes to republishing, I think that's one of the hardest ones to think about at first because you are not sure whether you should publish again an old post? The answer is yes, you can. One of the things that I love to do and that we do at Old Marketing School, if we're republishing, especially when we're republishing something, potentially you're going to add some extra value or even you are going to update some of the elements of it. So a lot of platforms and especially a lot of publications as well, if you do it for longer form content and then you use it on social, they even put when it has been last updated. So, you know, that transparency really helps building trust. So I would say, yes, it's super encouraged. And also the little things that you can do to make it even clearer that this content is actually hyper relevant because things have been added to it and amended it to make sure that it's fresh, funky fresh, as we say. Absolutely. Um, There is lots of things that you can republish. I would say content that is very timely and even like some very fresh pop culture um maybe you can obviously republish it but i find that things are a bit more evergreen we call them we also use this term in the certification which i'm sure that some of you will know but evergreen means that just like a beautiful tree is is there all year um you can use it again and again you know so think about 
lessons, tips, and ideas. Maybe you have concepts, tools, or frameworks, or even some of the problems that your audience have. If you do have a product-based business or you work with product-based businesses, even just some of the problems and the solutions that you're offering, these hopefully will be lasting for a very long time. So don't be afraid to do that. Usually um, when I talk about evergreen content in social media, I always use my water bottle ex- as why? an example. I don't know. If I'm selling water bottles and I find that I write content on why you should use more water and it's a listicle form content, mm-hmm. that's always something that you can repurpose. So sell your water bottle. <laughs> I love that. That will be the quote for the day. But it's one of those things like I genuinely find that there is so much power in the fresh content. Give me a little a little lull if anybody has seen any memes or any campaigns with references to Wednesday Adams. You know, the Wednesday TV series, she's amazing. amazing. You know, it was filmed hey, like, in lost. Romania. I'm in Romania right now. It was filmed. Oh. <laughs> so uh, oh my god, this got the most reactions. Okay. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so people seeing them. We actually, if you go to our LinkedIn page, we actually reshared some stuff that IKEA did as well, and some memes that people have done. We got Alexia as well went on. It's like yes, yes, yes. So, uh, you know, but these are examples of actually, you know, timely content that is used, and maybe it's not going to be relevant in a couple of months. It's going to be like eh, but there's other content like uh, Anchor's water bottle <laughs> that you can, you know, go back to again and again. So this is just the two examples as well. Yes. Um. Now, how much should we wait before we recycle that content? Now we are adding another re, I know, it's like, yeah, another word. Uh, you can say republishing, but, you know, technically speaking, we are recycling it as well. There's a couple of things I love to go back to. What do you say? Eco-friendly. <laughs> We're an eco-friendly webinar, everyone. <laughs> Very much in line with our values, so I'll take that. <laughs> and it was about it. Um, so there's a couple of things. I love systems. So you're going you're gonna to hear from our system bestie here. I just love to be able to obviously track the performance of the posts. And obviously you have amazing tools like Social Bee that allow you to do all these wonderful things as well. But sadly, even if you have tools, incredible tools like Social Bee, you still got to do the work yourself. If anything, you got to look at it. You got to actually identify things. So I like to actually make an appointment with myself and usually, actually, every 90 days is when I really look at performance. So when people ask me, what's the cadence? Every month, obviously, you look at what works and what doesn't. You keep track of post performance. But every 90 days, I really like to have a deeper look. And that's actually a good time frame before you recycle anything else. Um, and one of the things that I want to say is that you might republish something a few times. But honestly... Look at how things are working and maybe the topic actually becomes a bit saturated or maybe is becomes outdated. And so maybe you will stop republishing it because it stops performing so well. Absolutely. I was going to say that you gave an evergreen example and even evergreen trees change their needles, but they don't do it all at once. They do it one by one. So that's a very good reference. <laughs> Look at the analogies, like it's it, it's analogy galore today, everyone. You're welcome. Yes. Um, that's great, actually. So that's that's a great example of that when it comes to this too. <laughs> I've got a little clap as well from team. I love it. <laughs> um, a couple of best practices as well, just again, like the, the needles change. Um, try and change it up. See, analogy is back, everyone. You're welcome. Switch it up, <laughs> you know. Switch, it, change something about it. If you're switching to another platform, that also is another powerful way to do that, by the way. It almost becomes seamless. Um, but, you know, that's a thing that you can do. Switch it up, maybe shift the caption, maybe change the visual, change the format. And also, I like to use these, and that might be controversial for some of us, but I like to do these posts as a bit of an add-on. So I will post them at a slower rate than everything else. Um because otherwise it can become a bit more robotic and monotone. However, it's a great, you know, something you can have in your back pocket and use it as well. So, you know, switch so part of your content mix. Exactly. It's like, it's like a little cocktail mix, you know. Yes. You've got to switch up a couple of the ingredients. You're going to make sure that you take your time with it and also make sure that you vary it. So obviously, as we said a few times already, use different social media platforms. I always say, look at what content you have and see what it can be cross-pollinated, going back to our nature analogies. Is that- With bees. <laughs> <laughs> you are indeed bees. So, you know, I kind of like sitting within that too. But that's really important. Not everything can be cross-promoted on all social platforms without either sounding forced 
or just you really having to almost kind of create a whole new thing. And sometimes it's not worth it. Hey, like, you know, life is too short sometimes. I genuinely feel that if it feels good, then go for it. Cross pollen. Um, now, repurposing is probably one of the things that most of us know more of. So again, give us a little, a little clap if you are already repurposing, which means breaking down bigger content into smaller content. Okay, so we got Tina, Andrea, yeah, Andrea, of course. Uh, <laughs> we got who we got here. We got Kristen as well. We got Emily's like, how are you talking about her? Harley's like, of course I am. Okay, so the beauty of breaking these things down as well is that obviously you can have one piece of longer form content that you can break down into different places. Now, one of the things that I would say when it comes to this broken record is, you know, of course, we're going to change formats. Of course, we're going to adapt it. But honestly, create that system. And I really find that the problem that a lot of us have, and this is me going very actionable because that's how I like to be, of the top, bottom, top line, we all know how to do it. But when you're creating the long form content, think about the fact that you might break it down. I say this because we work with students and sometimes they, they use examples and they get stuck when we do our work together. And they're like, I don't know how to repurpose without literally feeling like I have, to have another like four or five hours to break it down. So for example, does your blog post have a couple of takeaways at the end? Do you make sure that you have a summary of some of the main points of your podcast? Do you actually have something within your video that actually has a clear like running order that you can use even if just for reference these sound very system-based things because they are but can save you so much time so instead of looking at you know instead of looking at a massive document instead of having to re-listen to the whole podcast if you have a couple of these pointers it really helps you breaking down the content better i love the idea of takeaways and summaries because these are great for you to then split the content into i don't know anka if you have any other things that you do but that's what our students love. And honestly, it comes into repurposing a lot, usually. Yeah, I, I completely agree. That's what we do as well. Sweep. <laughs> Sweep. I was hey! waiting for the signal. <laughs> Sorry, like gently sweeping us in. Sweeping us into an example. So this is actually, <laughs> we've been sweeping, Alex. So this is an example of a podcast that literally came out this week, by the way. Um, with the amazing Alex Law, which, by the way, if you want to look at uh, how to create content, he's a person to look at. So the podcast came out. Obviously, we had a blog post as well, but that was the main podcast. And then it's kind of funny. Then we repurposed the same podcast, but adapted it into the YouTube video. And then from there, we actually repurposed all these into different snippets that then came out on TikTok, on the YouTube shorts, and on Instagram, obviously, as you see there as well. So but we created that system. We kind of know what are, you know, what is the script of the podcast. So we already know there are a couple of questions that we always love to use as snippets because they usually give a lot of value. You might not always have that option, but if you can, I would highly recommend for you to break it down in something like this because it can save you so much time. Absolutely. So when it comes to blog posts, uh, obviously we have visual examples as well that we can use otherwise. So you know, you can break down our blog post into like a smaller chunks of content again. And this is where it's kind of a bit easier with visual because you can look at quotes, you can look at stats, you can look again at the takeaways. And obviously then you can break it down into like, like something that is visually appealing. Sometimes even just go back to GIFs. I know that everybody says the GIFs are dead, but they're not dead to me, okay? I'm a millennial. <laughs> okay? Please, GIF <laughs> lovers. Okay, thank you. The gift lovers are giving me claps. Thank you. Any, any gift lover, I know you can write it, but give us claps if there's anybody that loves gifts. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much, Alex <laughs> and Alexia. Everybody's really, really strong about this. But you see, there's so many ways that you can make it a bit more visual. Wow, we got another very hot take here with the gifts. <laughs> um, I love this. Um, the other beauty of this, another thing that you can do when you're repurposing like this, is you can have, let's say you use different tools for like design, you can even have your little design templates. You can even have your little, like prompts, which I'm sure also, you know, you have when you use tools like Social Bee, mm -hmm. that you can kind of then fill things into and it saves you even more time. So the more you can systematize by keeping it fresh, the better. And with visuals, a lot of the time is spent finding the right template, the right graphic, the right thing. So once you get what you're going to share, you can reuse it again and again. So be smart. 
Ugh. So summary again. So that's the other thing. As I said, summaries are also really powerful too, because then these work really well on platforms like Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm or TikTok even. So you can actually talk about the takeaways of a blog post and use them as either an infographic, which can work really well. I would say that could even go down on LinkedIn more likely. Um, Or you can even do a slide deck or a little presentation. You know, if you do a PDF, it turns out into a carousel on LinkedIn, for example, or slides, so you can do it that way too. You could even take a blog post and turn it into a podcast. Yay! And then what will you do with the podcast? You turn it into a little short form video, bam! You know, and all these things can work really well as well. Circle of the social media post. (laughs) Circle of life in social media world side. Yes. (laughs) If anybody feels like they don't have content for tomorrow, you could even do like literally write down one social media post, tag both of us and write down three takeaways. Great example of putting what we're learning into. I would look forward to that. Yeah. So (laughs) little idea for everybody. (laughs) And then finally, some best practices as well. I also need water right now, but... um, I always have it next to me. <laughs> that, that water bottle is becoming literally a celebrity. I like it. Uh, I'm going to start selling it. <laughs> I, will, I will buy it. See? see? See how easy it is, everyone? Yes. Um, again, even with repurposing, it's a big process. So test. Honestly, 90 days, you started like resharing your podcast on social media, for example. After 90 days, see if one is bringing more listeners in. Two is bringing more traffic in. Three, in general, even the social social content is actually getting some engagement. I think this is really important, again, because repurposing, if it doesn't lead to any goals being achieved, is well and grooving, but it's content for the sake of content, right? Yes. And finally, use analytics. And this is where tools like Social B can really help you with that as well. <laughs> Woo! Okay. What does reinventing mean? Anka, I'm going to take a two-second break. Can you remind us again what reinventing is? Absolutely. So reinventing your content, besides everything that's already been said, um, is reusing your existing content to keep it engaging and relevant. So as Fab said, update your existing posts, of your, your existing content. Look at a mix of fresh perspectives, fresh ideas, anything that can breathe new life into the topic that you've already talked about and the post that you've already shared so that your audience can find new value and can find new resources from the same post, pretty much. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few ways of, of uh, reinventing content here that can help you at least get a head start with it, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about them. Okay, I'm gonna read us the first five, and then kind of we'll see we'll see what's up after that. So, yeah. okay, so obviously captions. And that's another thing that I want to say. You can literally turn your caption into a script. So let's say you actually do a caption for LinkedIn or any of the posts. You can use an app called Big Vu, big, like big, V-U. You can use that app, actually, and then you can just copy the caption, pop it in there, and then it will literally turn your your phone into, like, a super-duper amazing transcript kind of, like, device. So you actually are saying it, you look to the phone, and the transcript happens. That's so that's a good one. Uh, I love doing it and I do it a lot. I this even do a great it. time for the chat to work so that we can pop that into. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to rub it in, everyone, but it's big, <laughs> big V U. So check it out if you do as well. Obviously, you can even turn the caption and the written content into a carousel as well, or obviously, LinkedIn slides as too. Um, I also love the idea of looking at comments. Uh, on TikTok and on Instagram, you can even obviously take reply. that comment and reply to it. So that's even easier. If not, you can even expand that content and obviously write about it. But I love the idea of actually showcasing the con- the comment just because what it does, it brings a higher intent to your audience to then, you know, do this again. And it really boosts engagement, which is usually the hardest thing for us to boost. So it shows that if you comment, we will take that on board and you will... Um, Almost like, you know, kind of give us the prompt for the next piece of content we're going to. 
Um, what you can also do, you can widen the topic of the original post. So that can help if you kind of see the topic is popular. You can just look at a bigger picture. You go to, um, sorry, another tool. Don't hate me, everyone. Answerthepublic.com is great for that. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> no. Answer the public. That hopefully is easy to write. Um, and obviously the final thing which I do enjoy doing is that if you look at trending audios, if you look at audios that might be kind of flying around the internet, you can also use these to actually play out a scenario for our specific post and kind of like break it into things like that as well. So these are my first five ideas. Okay, and where's the other five? Hmm. We lost them. <laughs> we lost them. <laughs> well, these are our five. <laughs> <laughs> well... They should have been here, but they're not. <laughs> I'll let you guys fill in the rest of the, the, the ways in which you can reinvent content. Apparently, we don't know how to count anymore. So <laughs> 10 turned into five. Sorry about that. Uh, we were also supposed to have a Q&A session with you guys. And I'm sure that you do have questions for us. Unfortunately, we're not able to receive them through the chat because it's not working. But you will be able to reach out to us individually and ask any questions that you might want to um, via email. I do have the email in the slides here in a bit. Um, I also have a few prepared questions because I learned that the chat is not working. And so I thought we could make this a little interactive even without that. So I'm thinking about a few commonly asked questions that some of you might have. But before we get into that, I want to share some awesome resources with you guys. Fab, I want you to talk about um, what you guys are offering. Amazing. Woohoo. Okay, so a couple of little things happening for everyone. Uh, so when you actually look at this link, which is allmarketingschool.com slash socialbee, one, you can join our free, you know, open day, which is actually a two-day event. It's completely free, and we're going to have some taster classes. So something a bit like this, but we're actually going to be a bit more practical. So we're going to have a workbook to work through because I'm a teacher. So that's what I do. Okay. And also we're going to have... A couple of AMA sessions where you can ask us anything about school and also what positive impact marketing is. And two incredible panels with our faculty, some incredible marketing experts and leadership experts. We're going to talk about leadership in marketing. We're going to talk about how to add impact and purpose in your marketing. And we're also going to be having two classes, one of introduction to positive impact and one on setting systems. So if you're ready for it. And um, in the same link, if you also want to set up a system and you want to start building your content system, we're also giving you 50% off our marketing brain template, which is our best selling templates. So I would love for you to join us on the open day. I want to say that. So it's completely free. You can access the replays if you cannot make it all live. But I would love to have that hang out a bit more. And you can ask us more questions there too. That's amazing. And on that note, if you're curious about social bee and how you can make your repurposing life easier, your social <laughs> media life easier, you can use the code learn 50 times three to get 50% off your social bee plan of choice for the first three months. Um, and you can do this by just going to the link that you see there. That's app.socialbee.io slash partner slash alt marketing school. Okay, and this is how you get in touch with us if you have any questions. My suggestion is to add a subject, something like a webinar question with Alt Marketing School so that we know <laughs> where you're coming from so that we can pinpoint whatever we said and in, be able to, to talk further on that conversation. If you have any questions, you can always reach out each one of us individual, both of us, however you prefer, we're going to take our time and reply to you um, within a few hours, hopefully. <laughs> now, if you have any questions, we have some questions now for the Q&A. So those are yes. some of the most asked questions that we usually get as well in our courses and lessons. So what, some of the ones that I picked come from real people <laughs> after, after our session about repurposing. So Hopefully they will yeah. help you as well. Ours come from frequently asked questions, actually. So it's something that people do really ask. So hopefully we'll be able to clarify some of the questions from the audience as well with this. So let me start with the first question. How do you identify which pieces of content are worth repurposing or reinventing? For me, if I, if I may start, it really does depend on the platform. And I think this is where 
you have to start by actually setting up what we call OKRs, which is obviously like mm. your goals. You know, we talk big names sometimes, but basically like you want to set your goals and obviously your milestones. And so choose, okay, what metrics really matter to me? Is it about people sharing my content? Is it about them saving it? Is it about them watching my videos? And then for that platform, obviously, you want to identify the outliers, the positive outliers, you know? This is what I would say. And I find that usually I look at my top six posts for the month max because I find that it can become really overwhelming. And I like to be able to tag them. I'm a Virgo, by the way, if anybody guessed that. So I really like system. I really like, I really like to make things super, like super pretty and super specific. So tagging actually is really important. So just highlight that content, whichever systems you use. We use Notion a lot, but you can use Google. You can use anything else. But having a content backlog that you can do, it really helps me, yes, identifying it by looking at the data, but also then keeping in mind what is the content I need to get back to. What about yourself slash yourselves? <laughs> so for me, um, I first look at whether that content is time sensitive or evergreen, whether I have those pins and needles to repurpose and keep fresh. Because if the content is very dated, like the example with the Wednesday um, <laughs> show, then it might not be as easy to to reinvent it or repurpose it. But on the other hand, if it's something like a listicle on how you should drink more water, <laughs> um, you can definitely get a bigger or broader um, topic out of it. Yes. Sure. <laughs> so the second question I have here is, what if I have a post that I consider to be good and valuable, but it didn't perform well? Can I still repurpose it? What do you think? Oh, you, oh, oh! I'm starting to answer all of them. I see how it is. Mm -hmm. See, we're see all answering is. all of them. We're answering. I, if you want me to start, I can start with this one. <laughs> yes, I would like that. Please, thank you. Yes. Okay. So I think that um, you can look at your post. If you're liking it, you're liking it for a reason. But if your audience doesn't resonate with it, maybe you weren't clear enough with it. Maybe there's a new way in which you can repurpose it so that you can share it and have your audience resonate with you on it. So whether it's the visuals, whether it's the tone of voice, the platform where you share it, even the time where you share it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, so you can play around with different elements of it and repurpose it, yes, but in a form to test it out to see if your audience is also interested in that. Your audience might not be interested in that. That's the harsh truth. And if that's the case, there's no point in repurpose it, in repurposing it. But you can test it out in a few ways before you decide that. That's my take on it. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to go left field a bit. <laughs> I mean, if you really like it, I mean, first of all, I find that usually the stuff that we really love, it might actually be something that is probably unique. So we'll say if you like it, you know, at the end of the day, some of the content is also just for you to share. So I would ask yourself, why do you like it? Do you like talking about that topic? Do you like uh, do you like how it made you feel about sharing something? So maybe it's less about the post itself. It's more about you sharing personal, some personal reflections and growing with your audience. If you like the topic and your audience doesn't like the topic, but the topic is still relevant, obviously, to what you do, then maybe the question is, you know, where what, what's happening with the messaging? That would be my thing. Like, there's probably a wider messaging issue when it comes to your marketing. Because if you lo love to talk about how to people with, uh, you know like their home renovation and uh, and your interior designer and they don't want to hear about it and they just want to hear about pretty designs then you're like maybe I need to find the people that want to hear about home renovation because that's what I'm offering you know so there can be literally a messaging and an audience need issue it depends on why do you like it so I will ask that question and that will help you understanding you know whether it's the content that you need to repurpose it's just the fact that you're enjoying creating more of that content in which case do a new one or follow the same blueprint Follow-up question. Boom. How, how do you decide which version of your content you should focus on? That's, the, that's a hard one. What do you mean by, what do they mean? I guess, what do, what do people mean by version? What would we say that means? So I guess it would be either um, whether you should recycle it into a video format, into mm -hmm. just a separate visual, like carousel, a GIF, 
uh, just a text post, whatever it is? For me, again, talking about what uh, we teach our students as well. So just to kind of say this is what we teach. So that's what I would say is it has to be a combination of what you enjoy creating and also obviously like what is native to the platform. You know, what, what performs well on the platform matters format wise. But also if you hate doing reels and, um, you know, first of all, there's, there's a thing. If you're in a wider team, I want to say that as well. There's a bit of a caveat. I love, you know, there are some people that might love actually being on video and talking about what you do or what your product is. So maybe they can be the people that if they feel comfortable, they can be in front of it. But or there are other things that, that, that don't necessarily need a person in front of it, you know. But also I find that if you genuinely hate being on Twitter with all of your passion and life, don't be on Twitter. Don't. Don't do it to yourself, everyone. Please don't. It's not worth it. And I know it sounds weird, but that's, I guess that's how we do marketing. That's how we teach marketing. We want marketing to be enjoyable for your audience, but also for yourself. So it's yes. always finding that fine balance. So, you know, choose something that works for the platform, that works for the user intent, which means what do people consume on that platform? Is it videos? Is it written form? But also do something that you know you will enjoy creating and you want to do again. That will be my take. As a little of a shameless plug and add on to what you said, <laughs> so we have this feature in the analytics that can help you look at how each type of content performs. So going back to what you said, look at what works better for your audience. Mm. You can see if images work better, if reels work better. It might be that the trend right now is going on reels, but for your particular audience, images might work better than reels. Mm. It is what it is. <laughs> so you sure. can use this information to your advantage. And especially if you don't like to do reels and it doesn't work for you. <laughs> Good. Next question. I only have a couple more and then uh, we'll stop this uh, mess of a webinar without the chat here. It, it feels empty without people talking to us, right? Yeah, no. Well, give, give us a little clap if you're still here, everyone. Come on. Come on. Let's use them. Yes, thank you, everyone. Yes. <laughs> I like it. Tina is on the spot. I love it. Tina's yes. like, you give me you give me a clap, I will give you a clap. Here I am. Thank you, everyone. That, it means that people are enjoying it. So I'm super happy. Uh, let me actually, you know what? I am going to recreate the poll that oh, yes. I did in the beginning. I promised I would. So are you going to use to mm -hmm. repurpose content for Excited to see, you know, what they Let's would do in also this type. Let's see. Yes or no? Ooh, I like this. <laughs> this Everybody's like, like, huh? <laughs> yeah. should I? Huh? So 100%. I think we did a great job here. <laughs> hey. Virtual high five on that. We did an amazing job. My and advice. people are going to repurpose content. We saved people a lot of time with this. I'm super happy about that. We're here to okay. start. We're here Final to start. question. Final on, question. question. Are Go there on. any common mistakes people make when repurposing and reinventing content? Do you want me to start or you want to start? I do start. You're the guest here. So then I'll add my take on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say my biggest mistake. And I know again. Some of us might, might probably know what is coming since it's been a thing for the webinar for me. <laughs> Systems, not setting up a system. Mm. Um, it's so easy to be overwhelmed creating content. It's even more, it's even easier, it's even more common for people to feel overwhelmed just when actually kind of setting down and repurposing content. Especially if you're doing it for multiple clients, especially if you're doing it for big pieces of content. Like we have a, a system that is kind of like perfected to the T when it comes to our podcast because obviously it goes into the, so many different places. So whatever system, and if you don't know what system works for you, obviously, as I said, you can ask, but also we have some resources and our second brain also has a content system. But I generally feel that it's worth a while learning how to make the process simple. So they go from point A, point B, point C, point D. Obviously, you have tools like Social Bee that allow you to do a lot of it too, which is the beauty of it. But I think even before that, there might be some things you need to do before you move to the platform to kind of repurpose and post that content. Mm -hmm. So build build it as a workflow, whichever way, with, with your laptop, with your with a piece of paper, just build it as a workflow so that you can see everything that is involved. 
and you can see how much time it's going to take you and then you can factor that time in. That's the biggest mistake. People don't do that because it's not the sexiest job, but it's so effective. It's so effective and it's so efficient. I agree. I agree. And I think that once you have that system in place, you can then take it a step further and look at how you can integrate it, not just use it on its own. So integrate it into your content strategy. Um, Don't just set it and forget it. That's not the theme anymore. That was the point at some point in the past, but it doesn't work anymore as it used to. So don't set it and forget it. Set it, look at it, repurpose it. Don't forget it. Reinvent it further and further and keep it moving forward and evolving. (laughs) I'm going to do a little like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) love it. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for sticking with us until the end of this webinar. Before we let you go, let me just reiterate the the, the offers that we have here for you, the, the additional resources that we have. So if you go to altmarketingschool.com slash social B, you'll get access to their free school open day, which is a two-day event, and also 50% off your marketing second brain template, which is the best-selling template. So I hear, right? Yes. Sorry, I can't wait to go there and see everything that you have in store um, for us there. And on the Social B site, you also have a three months with 50% off on any plan of your choice. And we have plans for um, different needs by going to the app.socialb.io slash partner slash alt marketing school and using the code learn 50 times three. If you have any questions either for myself or for Fab, you can always get in touch with us by using hello at socialb.io for social B and Fab at altmarketingschool.com for alt marketing school and for Fab here. Thank you so, so much for joining us on this incredible, interesting ride that was this webinar. (laughs) (laughs) I actually enjoyed it. With every technical issue that we've had, I've enjoyed it. And and the team live did too. So I think we did a great job. The replay people are gonna say, I'm just gonna tell you that much. We've reinvented it, so to speak. Exactly. (laughs) And don't forget to share your takeaways. If you do, we would love to see them. Remember to tag us, find us on the social world and let us know your takeaways. Let's let's reuse Absolutely. some of this wisdom. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining. Thanks, Fab, for being such an awesome co-host. And I look forward to more, more of this in the future. <laughs> with chat included. <laughs> yes, with chat included. Promise. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. And thank Have you a great so day. Have a great evening, depending on where you're located. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.